Hey, what's going on, everybody? It is Aaron Trevini here, and we have a wonderful guest. We have Michael from Houston, Texas. How you doing, Michael? Hey. Okay, Aaron. Uh, thanks for inviting me. Like, I don't know about wonderful. That remains to be seen. People's opinions won, uh, vary about that topic, whether I'm a wonderful guest, but we will see. Okay. <laughs> I have a good feeling about it, but um, it's great to have you on the show. Um, you know, so for, so for those who are not familiar with you, would you introduce yourself? I'm Michael Plux, and I'm known as Black Belt in Real Estate Taxation. So, okay, here I am, okay, with my sparring gloves, uh, beating up Uncle Sam, who is social distancing behind me, and here is my Black Belt in Real Estate Taxation. Okay, so that's who I am. Uh, you know, I work with real estate investors on tax advisory and tax services uh, uh, for 25 years. And uh, uh, if you guys are on places like uh, Bigger Pockets, you probably met me there, uh, you know, on various real estate Facebook groups, uh, etc. So. Okay, yeah, very good, Michael. Uh, I'm just curious, how did you get into, into, the, into the industry? By an accident? Uh, <laughs> Uh, I actually, uh, my original background is IT, and uh, as you can uh, hear from my wonderful East Texas accent, I wasn't born here. Uh, so when I uh, immigrated from Russia many, many years ago and uh, got an IT job, I was a contractor. And I quickly realized uh, that uh, figuring out how to minimize your taxes is an interesting game and also a survival skill so and then i mastered that skill and decided that i can help others do the same that's basically how it happened and never looked back so never looked here we back. Are. now i'm just curious as well michael do you also practice martial arts i do uh, mostly on uncle sam but actually yes yes <laughs> like uh yeah on when I'm not at work, yes, I do learn martial arts, yes. Okay, is it, I mean, do you do uh, judo or taekwondo or what, what do you do? You know, there are 500 different martial arts styles. Uh, everyone uh, claims that their style is the best, like the one I currently study is one of the Korean styles. Uh, and uh, while we're on that topic, I just want to share at some point, somebody had a, uh, one of those light bulb jokes and it says like you know how how many martial artists it takes to screw in a light bulb and it says 27 you know one to screw in the bulb and 26 to watch it and talk how they would do it differently in their style <laughs> and that's yeah that's uh, that's how martial artists go like I like that absolutely I can see how a lot of those lessons you learn through martial arts can also translate to to your business and what you do. That's actually a great observation because when we come to real estate taxation often that is true, there is one way to do it and then there are five other people who might do it differently and they will give you slightly varying advice. Uh, telling you that oh well no 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 I prefer to structure it differently. And uh, it could be that one way is more effective than others, just like in martial arts too. And also just like in martial arts, sometimes it's matter of opinion, you know, personal preference or style uh, for that matter. Okay. Sure, sure, absolutely, Michael. Now that's a great comparison talking about how, you know, maybe you have one objective, but there's many different styles and approaches based on your preference. Mm -hmm. Sure. Absolutely. So, you know, could you kind of expand more on, you know, maybe who your clients are or, you know, what they come to you for specifically? Uh, my clients are real estate investors, just like, you know, all of you guys who are uh, watching us today. So uh, we work exclusively with real estate investors, which means like if you are doing something else, uh, if you are a farmer, if you own a restaurant, if you are an IT consultant, uh, you know, we will politely uh, decline your business right now. We only work with real estate investors nationwide. It does not matter where you are. My office is in Houston, Texas, but our clients are anywhere in the States. 
we don't work with international clients because it's a different set of rules, which brings us on a different topic, you know, uh, in real estate, like everybody can do a lot of different things. And sometimes I hear either my clients or just, you know, uh, people in the industry talk about how they can uh, have 12 different exit strategies from a deal and they can do this and they can do that. Now, if you are at the elite level of investing, that actually may work for you. Uh, practice 12 different uh, strategies. If you are at a beginner level or, you know, at a medium, uh, like somewhere in between beginner and advanced, uh, the fewer things you do usually is the better. Uh, it applies to my industry. Like again, in my, I do real estate, taxation and real estate taxation only the only thing but that allows me to be like i said you know my moniker is black belt in real estate taxation okay that allows me to be to reach more advanced level in that specialty i know absolutely nothing about international taxation you know i know very very little about oil and the gas taxation you know even though i'm in taxes but yes that's not my specialty okay and uh for you guys who are in real estate I really can tell uh, as a person who has seen numbers from thousands of investors over uh, 25 years in, in different stages of businesses, the more focused you are, the faster your business grows and the faster you get recognition in the industry as a specialist in something. And when you're a specialist, people tend to uh, refer business to you, do business with you, and so on. So, you know, one of my uh, major advice is not really tax advice. It's a business advice. Find your niche and focus on something and do that really well. Now, when you're on top of that, then maybe consider adding something else, diversifying. But people who are trying to do everything immediately end up doing very little of all of that instead of doing a lot of something that they are you know, proficient in. Yeah, you, you brought up a, a great point about bringing up, um, you know, doing something that you're, you're proficient in, right? It kind of seems like maybe you see people that lack focus with their plan. Yes. You said like what people come to us for like different stages. Like some people come to us as, okay, I'm about to start investing in real estate, uh, what advice can you give me? Okay, people who are brand new in real estate are really not our clients, like somebody who, who has not even started just like uh, kicking tires and trying to figure out how to do about that. But as far as advice to people in that, well, I can share a couple of tips that I would give a person who is brand new because everybody at some point was brand new, right? And my advice would be number one is don't focus on uh, what is known in the like very common term thrown around at networking meetings, podcasts, and what not people saying is, okay, you need to set up everything properly and build your team. And I'm against that actually, okay? I'm not against doing things properly and not against teams. I'm against focusing on that before you do anything. I think every beginner investor should focus on making money first. Find their first deal, make your money first. Figure out how it works because building your sophisticated plan and structures is only as good as your plan is. And your plan will change. You will try something, you will realize, oh, you know what? That does not work as well as I expected. But guess what? These other things, is what I really like, that I can make working for me. And then your plan changes, but suddenly the structure you build and the team and all this time and money you invested in forming a structure becomes obsolete because your plan changed. You're now not doing wholesaling anymore. You decided you are buying properties or the other way around, you know, or something like that. So to me, is don't spend time too much on that, uh, you know, too much of your efforts on learning how to do all of these things. Just go out and do it. That's more important 
you know, than anything else. We have a lot of Facebook Academy graduates who can give you all of the advice in the world and they attended every webinar, you know, listen to every podcast, can give you uh, all advice you need. And then you ask how many deals you have done and they have done zero. They own nothing. They made no money, but they know everything. Well, uh, it creates a lot of uh, popularity, I guess, on social media, but does not help much as far as your family wealth. So to me, like that would be advice for people who are uh, starting. Okay, as far as uh, next level, if you have been around for some time, you know, did uh, like completed some deals, made some money, have some idea of how the industry works. Okay, then we would probably uh, try to find that niche and focus and all then optimize your business uh, procedures. By business procedures, I mean things as, okay, how do you pay your people? You know, talking about simple thing like that, we are filming this in February uh, and uh, a month ago, like a few weeks ago, like in, at the end of January, there was a deadline to send 1099s to contractors. And a lot of investors at that point started like looking at each other and what the heck is those 1099s? Never heard about that. Well, if you never heard about them, then it's too late in January because this is something that you need to get into a habit of before you hire any contractor. Before you hire, you need to get them to complete a simple form and uh, give you their tax ID, you know, whether it's social security or EIN. Okay, you need to collect that. You will need it later. Like things like that are important habits you know, also how you pay, like from what accounts, how you, how actually the payment is done. You know, everybody likes to pay cash and it's the worst possible method of doing that when you're running a business. It could be the best uh, between friends, but not, but really the worst payment method if you are uh, running a professional business. So we'll talk about that. And then of course come business strategies and Yes, at that point, we will talk about entities like different type of LLCs and corporations that you may consider for your business. And it's all case by case. That's another one of my pet peeves. Somebody asks on social media is, okay, hey, you guys like uh, how your business is structured. And then 50 different guys will tell us, oh, absolutely, S corporation. I do like S corporation. That's the best. And why like just, oh, my CPA said so. Well, it might really be the best for the one who said so. If it, if it was suggested by her CPA, if it was suggested by podcast, that could be a terrible idea. Not because anything is wrong with podcasts, right? It's because it's case by case. You know, something that uh, those structures remind me from time to time about dieting. You know how people tell us, okay, no, absolutely this diet, like nothing else, like nothing beats keto. You know, everybody like needs to do that. Oh, like there is a new fad and then everybody has to do this. But the truth is, if you talk to health professionals, I'm not so like not my area at all, but they will tell you that that same diet could be extremely dangerous to your health under certain conditions. It's not for, like, there is no such thing as this is best for everybody. Uh, you know, not in business, not in health, not in taxation, okay? Not, not in relationships, whatever. Not in politics. Oh, come on, let's talk politics. Let's really alienate some of our viewers and talk politics. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Please That's don't. <laughs> yeah, no, um, you, you brought up a, a great point as well about, you know, people, um, th there's no one size fits all, right? There's different strategies that people incorporate and it's on a case by case basis. Yes. Definitely. Oh, so and, and you also, you also brought up, it almost reminded me of, uh, you know, building a house, you know, you can't build the house with, without the, the foundation first. I love your example, Aaron, because if you are talking about uh, building a house, picking an entity or tax strategies, beef, 
that reminds you of okay let's choose furniture before the house is built <laughs> like there's something like that it's okay no like have a house first then you will see what you might need inside yeah. so sure that, sure absolutely I, I do like your analogy it's pretty good yeah thanks no i'm uh i'm interested as well um so just to kind of see you know let's say someone is a new investor um, you know, maybe they need to get some money, do some deals first, and then eventually come and see you. Um, you know, should they consult with an attorney to make an LLC or how would someone who hasn't made one go about making an LLC? Okay, excellent question. Like you mentioned how does go about forming an LLC. I will take a step back before answering your specific question because you already, your question is based on an assumption that we are forming an LLC. And to me, that's absolutely not an automatic conclusion. Like you may want to form an LLC or not. So uh, I'll spend a couple minutes giving like very, I guess, basic uh, introduction on what LLC is and why, why you might want to form it. Okay, so LLC is a business entity which a lot of people, if they do not have business experience, assume is necessary in order to get tax deductions. I see those questions all the time where it says, okay, can I take this deduction? I don't have an LLC yet. I own property in my own name. So is it too late to form an LLC so I get a tax deduction? Like all of these variations of the same question. And the assumption in this question is that if you don't have an LLC, you don't have a business and do not have tax deduction. It's false, completely false. You don't need an LLC for tax deductions at all. If you run a business as a real estate investor, you have all of the deductions, exactly the same deductions before you have an LLC or after you have an, an, an LLC. You do not lose any deductions. You do not gain any deductions. They're exactly the same. Yes, actually, if you form an LLC, you will have another deduction, the cost of forming the LLC. That's only like additional deduction because you will have an extra cost of doing that. So other than that, everything you spend money on business-wise is still deductible without. So number one is if you are thinking about creating an LLC for tax purposes, you may not really need it. There are many investors who run uh, fair, fairly sized businesses for years and never had an LLC and not planning to and they're doing just fine tax-wise. Now, the second part of that is your LLC most of the time is created not for tax purposes. It is created for legal liability protection and that is area for an attorney. I'm not an attorney. I'm an accountant. So like I'm federally licensed enrolled agent. That's that like my official designation. It's very similar to a CPA. Like when you see letters like mine, EA, like I could explain details, but for practical purposes, EA or CPA are very, very similar and very comparable. Like we are, we are both licensed tax professionals. Like you just our licensing is slightly different, but otherwise we are very similar. So I'm, in, I'm on that side of the business, on the tax side, not legally, not, cannot give any legal advice. Okay, so uh, giving legal advice would be illegal for me. Okay, so attorneys have very, very different opinions about LLCs. Okay, back before COVID times, uh, when we had a lot of face-to-face uh, -face networking. And right now we, we do the same, but on Zoom. But I hosted panels of real estate lawyers where I was the moderator and we would ask like all lawyers sitting in front of the room saying is, okay, what would you say about LLCs? Or like there is a variation of LLCs known serious LLCs. Like what do, what did you say about serious LLCs? And the first attorney says like basically, oh, that's, uh, you know, the best thing since sliced bread. Okay, the second one says, over my dead body. The third one says, well, you know, in this particular situation, I would highly recommend it, but not in other. 
So they never agree between themselves. And I have many friends among lawyers and one of my lawyer friends, he is running joke and he says like, ask two attorneys, get three opinions. And that is pretty much how their industry works. And I'm not talking, it's not because one of them is uh, smart and the other is an idiot. No, that's because legal uh, liability is a very controversial area where qualified, competent lawyers legitimately have different opinions. And the advice I always give my investors uh, and clients is this. If you're considering getting LLC for legal protection, find one attorney, and I stress number one, just one attorney, like select one. You can interview many, but find one who you trust, who appears to you knowledgeable, competent, approachable, reasonable, whatever your criteria is, okay? Uh, the only asterisk is the attorney needs to be licensed in your state. Like if accountants, like I said, I work nationwide. For tax work, I can work in any state. I don't have to be licensed by a state. But attorneys, in order to practice, need to be licensed by state. So that's the only like limitation for an attorney uh, as far as that. But then choose the one you like and then subscribe to his religion. And because like those opinions about uh, legal protection are similar to religion. I hope I'm not offending any religious viewers of ours because you can argue all day long and still never agree whether your religion is more accurate than mine. It's a matter of belief. So go with your one attorney's advice. Why one? Because if you try to get second opinion, I can assure you the second opinion will be different. And then you go try to get third opinion to settle the dispute between number one and number two. And instead of resolving that, you just get a third opinion different from both number one and number two. And then you say, oh God, what do I do? Then don't put yourself in that situation. Trust one attorney's advice. And if your attorney says you need an LLC, do it. If your attorney says you don't, then don't. Or what kind of LLC or in which state? Because if you go and listen to podcasts and webinars, there are, or read books, you know, there is a lot of information about that, those structures uh, available online, like for free. Like you can spend a week watching all of these and get very confused because some of them suggest very simple things. You listen and saying is, guys, you don't need any LLC at all. Just buy a lot of liability umbrella insurance uh, policies and that's all. And you are covered. You don't need to worry. And then you listen to somebody else who says, no, 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 absolutely not. You need to have one LLC uh, out of Delaware, you know, Nevada. And then you need under that to put a different structure, you know, that involves land trust. And then your LLC, which is based locally in your state. And they talk about all of these sophisticated structure. And again, which one of them is right? All of them are right. The thing is what works specifically for you so find your own attorney and you know get advice of your attorney and that's the only practical way you know to survive that so back to your question i gave you such a long answer i apologize for me like talking uh, non-stop about llc that's something just that uh, so often is asked and we are uh, we very frequently have to address that question yours was how do you go about setting it up once you find that attorney, if your attorney approves, just ask him to, to form one for you. There are some CPAs out there who offer you LLC creation. Very bad idea in my opinion. I might upset my colleagues by saying that. People like us who are accountants have no business creating entities. It's not our job. That's a legal, a, that is, that's one of the legal services, and it should be done exclusively by attorneys. Now, you may roll a dice and decide to do it using one of those online companies, like there are websites where you like sort of do it yourself form companies. Well, again, like if you are comfortable taking that risk, because those LLCs set up this way, they are set up using a template 
They are not customized for you other than they inserted the name of your company and your own name. Otherwise, everybody has the same. They are not customized for your state and they have a lot of holes, as far as I understand from my attorney friends. So yes, it's, it will be official. It will be registered with the secretary of state in your state and you can run it. You are not breaking any rules. But the question is, will it actually protect you if you are sued, which is the purpose? And some of the attorneys will tell you that no, they won't. They are not strong enough. You need a better one for which an attorney is required. Okay, not my call. Do you hire an attorney or do it yourself? It's just like with, any, with anything else you do, right? Do you build your own website or do you hire a profession? Uh, do you do your own inspection? Because, hey, I've seen so many houses I know. Like, do you do your own like you or do you hire an inspector to find all the problems with your house, right? Like, do you do you do your own, uh, do you serve as your own general contractor supervising uh, all, the, all the trades or do you hire a general contractor? Do you do your own taxes or you hire an accountant? Like all of these questions, are, almost anything is possible to do yourself if you learn how to do it, if you are willing to invest into that. Again, I know multiple people who can do professional jobs as good as professional trained in that field. But it just does not come from watching a YouTube video. You know, it comes from very substantial investment of time and money into learning, uh, you know, how to do that. Again, like I have some clients who are extremely knowledgeable in what I do, but they still hire us for guidance because they understand that, yes, there are, there are limits to their understanding on how it works. Uh, so uh, professional help is still warranted, even, at, even if they understand it real, real well. Sure, sure, absolutely. You brought up a great point, you know, about the website too. You know, let's say you're a business owner or really anyone you want a website. Sure, you could do the website yourself, but you could also hire a professional to make ensure it's done correctly. Yes, but uh, let me pick up on your analogy, like elaborate on that a little more. Okay, so when we talk about website, a good question to ask is this. What, year, what would be the difference for you between homemade website and professionally designed website? And the question would be, is, okay, how important and crucial your website is for your business? And let's say you are a wholesaler and you use your website just to post your properties. Now, for wholesalers, it may not even be the best way to market a property. You know, not these days, posting them on your own website is generally an inefficient way to market uh, wholesale properties. But even if you do, is okay. So somebody looked, and let's say your website is uh, clunky, does not look very contemporary, and does that. Would it prevent somebody from buying that property for you? I would speculate that not very likely. You know, they would look and still they are looking at property. They are not looking at the at your website. You know, they they don't care that much how well your website is designed. They want to see what you have to sell. So for somebody like a wholesaler, a homemade website might actually work, you know, if they, if they know how to do it uh, in a cheap way themselves. Yeah, why not? It's not that crucial. Now, if you're a real estate guru and your website stinks, you're probably not going to get a lot of people interested in hiring you as a guru. So... Uh, when I look at guru websites, most of them are very sleek, clearly professionally designed. So like anything you do, when you hire professionals, you need to evaluate what is the importance of that. Like what are the consequences of doing it poorly? Like I say, poorly website, depending on where you are, may be a non-issue, may be a big issue. Let's talk about my area for a second, taxation, right? So if we talk about real estate taxation, if your business is uh, being a wholesaler again, okay? So you, you are a wholesaler and you sold a couple properties 
in 2020, just like your first year in business, how crucial it is to find top tier tax professional you know, where I put like without, uh, without like sufficient modesty where I put myself, right? Like when it like at higher level tax professionals, do you really need me? Frankly, I, I'll tell you no. You know why? The being wholesaler is a fairly straightforward business model. So what you need for tax purposes there is just make sure that you carefully recorded all of the business expenses that you had. Your focus should be not as much on taxes as on bookkeeping. Make sure you are not forgetting stuff, like recording everything you spend money on. And after that, pretty much any competent tax person can do it fairly well. Yeah, again, like, like in any industry, you know, we're saying is painter. Like, do you need a top, top level painter? The question is painting what? If you are repainting your apartment unit, like you own multifamily and you are repainting your apartment unit, like in your standard gray, you know, like all around is, you know what? Pretty, pretty much any painter can do that job. No, are there painters who will screw up this job too? Of course, you know, there are, there are bad contractors or bad professionals in every trade, but any competent one should, should be able to do it. Now, if you are putting on a market, like uh, you finished your high-end flip and selling it like in the 800K zone, and you want to paint uh, the living room in that, you probably want to find a painter who is actually like real experienced and quality painter. Because if you do shoddy job there, like people at that level are looking like walking the house and they're not going to buy it if they see that it's sloppily painted, right? So again, same same with me as well. So any competent like or or even half competent tax person should be able to do a good tax return for a wholesaler of small volume. Okay. Now if you are big time wholesaler making big money, like uh, you cleared 100 k last year in assignment fees. You know what, at that point you need way more than tax preparation. You actually need tax planning. What you need is you need to figure out is how to structure your business in a way that you pay less, not just how to correctly prepare your return. And then you would probably need somebody like our firm where we don't focus on preparing taxes. We focus on tax planning forward like not recording what already happened, but making sure that in the future you will be better off. Okay, so again, like depends on the size of the job. Again, so if you have one property which you are house hacking, can you do it yourself too? Like you are you're already house hacking, you already sort of like do it yourself landlord, right? So can you also like do, do it yourself taxes? Maybe but at least make sure that you get some good understanding of how it's done. House hacking is actually more complicated on tax side than it seems. It's not that simple. In fact, it's simpler to do a standard rental house than a house hack arrangement. It's more complex than that. But if you just have one house, can you do it without, uh, hiring a CPA or at least with a CPA who is not at the top tier of the industry? Probably yes. Could there be mistakes? Sure. Could it be improved by somebody? Yes. But like, could you get away with that? In many cases, yes. Now, if you have a portfolio of properties, like multiple properties and you that throw significant cash flow and have different situations there, then uh, you know you will realize that not getting top tier professional help would really hurt your bottom line, that you would be leaving a lot of money on the table and also getting unnecessary attention from this guy. You know, Uncle Sam might start getting interested in what you are doing because the numbers that you put there will either be in the wrong places or throw some red flags, you know, and then you will still need us 
but in a different capacity to defend you from Uncle Sam. Now, that's an expensive thing. You know, it's cheaper to do it right than to fight Uncle Sam afterwards when it's done wrong. So I always say like when people are saying is, okay, when I was teaching classes, uh, I have not done it during COVID time, but when I was teaching, I always say, well, you end up paying for education one of the two ways anyway. Like you either get education before or after, <laughs> like <laughs> when he forces you to, <laughs> like, yeah. to pay for that education. So, you know, sooner or later, you do need to learn how taxes uh, work in your business and generally how to run your business efficiently. Sure. There's a lot to be said for that. You know, it's either, uh, you know, you pay now or, or you pay later, but either way you have to, you have to pay, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Unlike, unless you try, like some people are trying, if you completely, uh, if you expect that your business can fly under the radar completely and never get noticed, well, good luck. Or maybe, like, there are some people I do know personally some people in the industry who have been investors for, you know, quite a few years and they brag privately that they never filed a tax return. Yes, there are people like that among us. Yes, and uh, sometimes, you know how I know that they exist? Because sometimes they do get caught and then they come to me and I'm saying, okay, now help me, now this guy wants last five years of returns from me and they want it in two weeks. Can you help me? The answer is no. I probably cannot help you to catch up with five years of taxes in two weeks. Yeah. You know, so sometimes, yes, you know, you can, you can run uh, unnoticed for a while, but some, and sometimes forever, but you know, sometimes you do get, you do get uh, noticed and then it gets a little stressful. Sure, of course, Michael. Um, you know, well, is there anything that you haven't said that you'd like to that you'd like to say? How many hours do we have? <laughs> Man, I can I can talk nonstop for five hours right now, just like uh, drink uh, water, like a glass of water in between, and we are good to go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I think I know you like I'm joking, obviously. Like I think what you really implied, like, is there some advice I want to give in closing? Is that like sort of yes. uh, that, we're, that we're talking about is, okay, well, uh, again, I have a choice of maybe a dozen of those. And I, I give some of them on different podcasts like uh, or webinars. I teach my own webinars. You can find them online. Okay. And I, uh, uh, I'm frequently a guest on other people podcasts like you, you know, and uh, bunch of other people. So there are different uh, tips I try to uh, share in different places. I'll give one here. But before we do, allow me a second just to, uh, to say is, okay, so if anybody wants to find me, okay, and get in touch with us and talk about us. So the easiest way to find us is on my company's website. And my company is called in a way which I hope is very easy to remember. Like I said, we work for 25 years exclusively with real estate investors, and that's abbreviated as REI, real estate investments, right? So, and our company is called REI Tax Firm. REI T A X F I R M. So if you type REI Tax Firm.com, you will end up on the website. Oh, we talked about website creation. Okay. Uh, guys, forgive me, that one was not a, uh, designed by top-level professionals. You will notice that. Okay, my web, my website has been designed, uh, but it, it was designed years ago. It needs a facelift, and one day I will attend to that. <laughs> but RIAxForum.com is how you can find us. My name, again, is Michael Plux. I'm a black belt reminding you in real estate taxation beating up Uncle Sam on a daily basis. So as far as closing uh, uh, closing tip is, uh, I want to mention that specifically in the context of what is happening now. So we are filming this episode in 2021 in the second year of COVID. And uh, if you network 
and I think is like if I should drop if everybody networks when you network and talk to people in the industry you will hear a lot of different feedback about how business operates under COVID condition and the range of these opinions is huge there are many people who report is oh man like that sucked 2020 was the worst year ever as a matter of fact i'm throwing in the towel and going back into a corporate job i'm done with that cannot do real estate anymore like look i held my rental properties tenants are not paying they don't allow me to evict them in today's conditions you know then somebody says is okay i was trying to sell my flips nobody is buying and like etc cetera, etc cetera. so you hear all of these stories from real people and there are quite a few of those stories if you focus on them your impression will be okay uh we're done you know the industry is over it's a very bad time to enter it okay then you listen to other people and it seems like are you freaking kidding me that's the best time to be in the industry like in 2020 i killed it like i never had a year as good as 2020 yes covid no covid like whatever it was perfect you know and it's only going to get better look how many foreclosures are coming our way uh yada 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 like the biggest wealth redistribution uh, you know in our lifetime and okay so you listen to that i'm saying oh you know what maybe the other way around maybe i need to quit my corporate job and go <laughs> to real estate so my advice to that is don't listen to either side you know the only way you can do that is get some basic education and try to do that and see for yourself you may find out that you cannot really be very successful right now and the first group will seem uh correct to you or you may find out that that's the greatest business uh, for you and finally you are free and successful and you are on the way uh to financial independence as you always wanted so try it for yourself don't believe your friends don't believe people on social media oh if i can have one more advice that one more advice will be just generally don't believe anything on social media you know people who post about real estate on social media i know a bunch of those people uh personally and i know their books i know their real numbers okay they nobody on social media is telling you the truth like absolutely nobody don't don't be fooled like listening to these people and thinking is oh okay okay like i just did it is and you should too maybe he did that maybe he did not or maybe he did that and lost a bunch of money you never know like tune it out that's a great business for some people like any business you know anything you try it works well for some people works uh does not work at all for others look at the restaurants even in covid time how many closed but then look at other restaurants how many how many there are a lot of restaurants actually who during the time of covid are prospering you know they expanded their takeout you know curbside business and they are doing better than i know restaurants who expanded yeah. in 2020 so you know don't take the, there is no rule of thumb right now the the game like the field where you are playing definitely has changed so new approaches are needed like you know some of the old one but some of the new ones and just try it for yourself and see how it works you may find it very unsatisfying and you may find it and it may be the greatest decision you have ever made just try it yourself that's my uh you know closing advice i guess for today Aaron. that's been uh you know an honor and a pleasure to be on your uh, show so you know thank you very much for inviting me for everybody who is listening to us again stay healthy in 2021 uh, grow your business be successful take care of yourself your family and you know and our planet thanks absolutely michael it's been a real uh, pleasure having me on the show we've talked a bit about you your business um you know advice for people in knowing that there's not a one size fits all it just it's on a case by case basis it depends on them and their goals 
Um, and, and it's been great to have you on the show. So thank you so much. Okay, thanks. Thanks everybody. I